3.1 1 Two. Goodbye. Three. Four. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi, Jack. It's Sandra. I was just calling to see if you wanted to meet up later. Five. Six. Oh, hi, it's James. I phoned half an hour ago, but Anne wasn't in. Is she there now? Seven. Three point two. One. I'm a shop assistant and I work in a clothes shop. And what really makes me angry is when I'm serving somebody and suddenly their mobile rings and they answer the phone and start having a conversation. It's really annoying. I think that if you're in a shop and talking to a shop assistant, then you shouldn't answer the phone. Two. What most annoys me is people who use their phones on a plane. I mean, everybody knows that you have to switch off your mobile on a plane and that you mustn't use it until you get off the plane. But some people switch on their phones the moment the plane lands and they start making calls. Why can't they wait another 15 minutes? 3. I hate it when people talk very loudly on their mobile phone in a public place. The other day, I was in the waiting room at the doctor's and there was a man there whose mobile rang about every two minutes, and we all had to listen to him talking loudly to his wife, then to his boss, then to a garage mechanic. I think that if you're in a public place and someone calls you, you should talk really quietly or go somewhere else. And you don't have to shout. The other person can hear you perfectly well. 4. What really annoys me are people who use their phones a lot when they're with other people. Like when you're out having a drink or a meal with someone and they spend the whole time talking on their mobiles or texting other people to arrange what they're doing the next day. I think it's really rude. 5. I hate people who use their mobiles in the car, even if they're hands-free. Whenever you see someone driving badly, nine times out of ten they're on the phone. 3.3 1 You mustn't use your phone on a plane. 2 I don't have to go to work tomorrow. 3 We have to do an exam in June. 4 you should switch off your mobile in class. 5. You shouldn't talk loudly on a mobile phone. 6. I must go to the bank this morning. 3.4. Laszlo. Well, I think sometimes, yes. English people can be so polite that you don't really understand them. For example, I went to London with some other teachers from Hungary to do a training course for teachers of English. It was a special course for foreign teachers. During the course, the tutors, the people who were teaching us, talked to us a lot about our progress. And we thought we were all doing really well. So we were very, very surprised when some of us failed the course. What had happened was that the English tutors were so polite when they gave their opinion about our teaching that we didn't realise we were doing things badly. I think that's typically English. I think sometimes they need to say what they think to be more direct. Paula, 
I think English people are so polite that it makes us Latin people think that they're cold. I mean, we're very noisy and extrovert, and so when they're quiet and polite, we think that they don't like us, that they're being unfriendly. So maybe yes, they can be too polite. I think they need to relax more. Melik, I think the English are very polite, but I don't think they are too polite. I mean. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. In my job, I've met a lot of English people, and I think they are much more polite than we are, both in the way they talk, and also in the way they respect other people's opinions. And their manners in general are much better. Okay, this isn't true about all English people. The football hooligans and some of the tourists that come here to Turkey and drink too much—they are not polite. But the majority are, and I like it. Renata. Well, I went to London a few years ago, and one day, surprise, surprise, it was raining, and I was walking along the street, and everybody had an umbrella, and every time someone went past me, they hit me with their umbrella, and then said, "Oh, sorry," or "I'm awfully sorry," or "I'm terribly sorry," and after the tenth time this happened. I just said to the person who hit me, "Please stop saying sorry and just be more careful." So, in answer to your question, I don't think English people are too polite. They say sorry and thank you a lot, but it doesn't really mean anything. Three point five. Okay, ladies. Now, can you describe the man you saw in the bank? Well, he was、uh, sort of、uh, medium height, you know, not short, but not tall either, and quite skinny, you know, thin. Yes, and he had a beard and a little moustache. No, he didn't. He had a moustache, but not a beard. It's just that I think he hadn't shaved. No, it was a beard, I'm sure. And anyway, Doris, you weren't wearing your glasses, so you can't have seen him very well. I could see perfectly well. Ladies, ladies, please. So, no moustache then? No, he had a moustache, but he didn't have a beard. And what about his hair? Dark. Yes, short, dark hair. Straight? No, curly. I'd say. Wouldn't you say, Doris? Yes, very curly. So, dark, curly hair. Yes, that's what we said. Are you deaf or something? <clears throat> And what time was it when you saw this man? Would you say it was afternoon, or would you say? Three point six. Train. A. In his eighties. Neighbor. Overweight. Straight. Way. Bike. I. Bright. Height. High. Light brown. Might. Sight. Three point seven. One. She has light brown hair. It's short and straight. Two, he's medium height and slightly overweight. Three, he's in his eighties, but his eyesight's very good. Four, she likes wearing tight straight leg jeans. Three point eight. Raphael Lloyd, a Spanish first name and a British surname. Yes,、um, my mother was Spanish and my father's English. Oh, is is Rafael your real name then, or your stage name? Huh, it's it's my real name. My mother was from Cordoba in Spain, and Rafael is the patron saint of Cordoba,、uh, but it's also my stage name. What what nationality are you? Well, I'm I'm British and Spanish. I was born in Spain, and I was brought up there. I've spent a lot of time in Britain too.、Mm. I've been living in, in Oxford for the last ten years. Oh, nice. Are you are you bilingual?、Uh, yes, I am. And it's a strange question. Do you feel more Spanish than British, or vice versa? Well, 
I think I feel more Spanish in most respects, uh, especially as a big part of my life revolves around Spanish culture. Right. Uh, but I do like individuality, eccentricity, and tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must feel a little British uh, too. I suppose. Do you think you uh, do you think you look more Spanish than English? Well, I think I look Spanish, but when I travel, people always think I'm from their country. And people have stopped me in the street, for example, in Cairo and in Rome to ask me for help. So I must have an international face. Maybe I should be a spy. <laughs> when did you start learning to play the guitar? I started when I was nine, when my family lived in Madrid. Um, a teacher used to come to our flat and, and give me lessons. I see. So, so how long have you been working professionally as a flamenco guitarist? I started when I was 17. Uh, I mean, that's when I started to get paid for my first concerts. Mm. I'm now 39, so that's uh, 22 years. Mm. 3.9. As a flamenco guitarist living in Britain, is it easy to make a living? Uh, I think life as a musician is never easy. Um, but I think it's easier here than in Spain because there are fewer flamenco guitarists here. And, and where's flamenco popular, uh, apart from in Spain? Well, the biggest markets uh, for flamenco outside Spain um, are really the USA, uh, Germany and Japan. But I've found it's popular all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, it has a strong identity that people relate to in every corner of the planet. Now, you don't look like the stereotype of a flamenco guitarist. Um, <laughs> but people imagine flamenco guitarists as having long, dark hair. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I used to have really long hair, uh, but I decided to cut my hair short. <laughs> Are people in Britain surprised when they find out that you're a flamenco guitarist? No, uh, not, not really. Um, that's one of the things I like about Britain. No one judges you on appearance. All right, and, and what about in Spain? Well, actually, in Spain, people find it much harder to believe that I'm a flamenco guitarist. I think Spanish people uh, believe in stereotypes more than in Britain, and uh, they judge you more on your appearance. But as soon as people hear me playing the guitar, uh, then they know that I'm the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Could you play something for us? Of course. <laughs> Three point ten. One. He could read when he was four. Two. I can't play the guitar. Three. Where could we have dinner? Four. I can see what you mean. Five. We couldn't find the street. Six. What can you do there? Three point eleven. One. I'd love to be able to ski. Two. We won't be able to come. Three. I've never been able to dance. Four. She hates not being able to drive. Three point twelve. One. I'd love to be able to ski. Ride a horse. I'd love to be able to ride a horse. Windsurf. I'd love to be able to windsurf. Two. We won't be able to come. Park. We won't be able to park. 
do it. We won't be able to do it. Three. I've never been able to dance. Speak French. I've never been able to speak French. Play chess. I've never been able to play chess. Four. She hates not being able to drive. Cook. She hates not being able to cook. Swim. She hates not being able to swim. Three point thirteen. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of All About You. Today's program is about taking up new activities and how to succeed at them. With us is psychologist Dr. Maggie Pryor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. Pryor. What tips can you give our listeners who are thinking of learning to do something new? Well, first of all, I would say choose wisely. On the one hand, don't choose something completely unrealistic.、Mm -hmm. For example, don't decide to take up sailing if you can't swim, <laughs> or parachute jumping if you're afraid of heights. But on the other hand, don't generalize and think that just because you aren't very good at one sport,、mm -hmm. you won't be able to do any sports at all. I mean, just because you were bad at gymnastics at school. Doesn't mean that you might not love playing tennis. So think positive. Definitely, and never think you'll be bad at something before you've even tried it. Okay, so let's imagine I've started to learn to play tennis, and I'm finding it very hard work. Well, first, don't give up too quickly. Carry on for at least a few months. It often takes time to begin to enjoy learning something new.、Mm. Another thing that can help if you're having problems learning something is to give it a break. And then try again, perhaps a month or two later. But what if I carry on and I find I really, really don't have a talent for tennis? I think the important thing is not to be too ambitious. I mean, if you've never done much sport and you decide to learn to play tennis, don't expect to become the next Wimbledon champion.、Mm. Just aim to enjoy what you're doing, not to be the best in the world at it. But if even after all this, I still feel I'm not getting anywhere? Well, sometimes you do have to accept it and say. Okay, this really isn't my thing, and you need to give it up. But why not try something else? There are lots of other things you can learn to do. But remember that if you take up an activity that you're really interested in,、yeah. even if you aren't very good at it, you'll make new friends because you'll be meeting other people who have similar interests to you. So it might be good for my love life. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Dr. Maggie Pryor. Thank you very much. Three point fourteen. Song, you can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want, but you must try, try and try, try and try. You'll succeed at last. Succeed at last. Oh yeah now. Rome was not built in a day. Opposition will come your way. But the harder the battle you see, is the sweeter the victory.
succeed at last. succeed at Where exactly is it? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Okay. How far is it? Okay. Okay, merci. Au revoir. Any luck? I think I've found an apartment. How do I get to Belleville? Uh, the easiest way is to get the metro at Pyramide. Take line 14 and change at Châtelet. Okay. Then take line 11 towards Mérida Lila. Where do I get off? At Belleville. How many stops is it? Six, I think. Oh, right. I found it on the map. How long does it take to get there? About half an hour. Have you found a flat? Yeah, in Belleville this time. When are you going to see it? This afternoon. If you can wait till six, I'll give you a lift. I live near Belleville, so I'm driving that way. That's great. Thanks. 3.16 Where exactly is it? How far is it? How do I get to Belleville? The easiest way is to get the metro at Pyramide. Take line 14 and change at Châtelet. Then take line 11 towards Mérida Lila. Where do I get off? How many stops is it? How long does it take to get there? If you can wait till six, I'll give you a lift. Three point seventeen. This is the appartement. Je vous laisse visiter. Je serai en bas. Merci, madame. Sorry, Nicole. What did she say? She said that we can have a look at the flat. She's going to wait downstairs. Thanks. So, what do you think? Well, it's a long way from the station. And it's on the fourth floor. It's a pity there isn't a lift. Who needs one? The stairs are good exercise. Look, there's a great view from here. It's also very noisy. Sure, but it has character. It's just how I imagined an apartment in Paris. Everything's old, including the heating. It will be very cold in the winter. Oh, hi. Well, what's it like? Nice. Really Parisian. Are you going to take it? I think so, yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you on your own? No, I'm with the woman who owns the apartment. I'll call you back. Okay, speak later. Love you. Love you too. Bye. I'm sorry about that. That was... That was my... My daughter. Calling from America? You know, she's just taking an interest. Taking an interest? That's nice. 3.18 So, what do you think? It's a long way from the station. It's a pity there isn't a lift. 
What's it like? I can't wait to see it. Are you on your own? I'll call you back. 3.19. One. Oh no! I can't find my mobile. Well, you had it when we were in the cafe. You were texting your friend. Oh yes, that's right. Maybe I left it in there. Do you want to go back and see? Oh, but can you phone me first? Then, if my mobile's in the cafe, maybe someone will answer it. Okay. Oh, hey, oh. I can hear it. It must be in your bag somewhere. No, it's in my jacket pocket. Two. I'm starving. What time did you ask them to come? I said to come at eight o'clock for drinks and then dinner at eight thirty. Well, it's eight fifteen now. Yes, they should be here any minute. They're usually very punctual. Ah, that must be them. Oh, hello.、Uh, sorry to disturb you. We're collecting、sorry? for Christian aid. Oh,、uh, I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I make regular contributions. Who was it? Somebody collecting money for charity.、Oh. Honestly, I really think people should phone when they're going to be late. It's very inconsiderate. It's nearly twenty past now. Three. No.、Mm. Is that you? It doesn't look anything like you. I didn't know you used to have long hair. Well, this passport is nearly ten years old, which reminds me, I'm going to have to renew it soon. Well, you definitely need a new photo. You look really awful. Okay, let's see yours then. No, no, you can't see it. I hate showing people my passport photo. Come on, you've seen mine. Oh, that's not bad. It's a lot better than mine.、Mm. In fact, I think I prefer your hair as it was then. Four. So, where did you meet him? At work. He's one of the designers. And what's he like? Oh, he's funny, intelligent. Yes, but what does he look like? Oh, just like Pierce Brosnan, tall, dark, and handsome. No, I'm joking. He's got short, dark hair, and he's not very tall. But I think he's really good looking. Five. What happened? How did it go? No comment. Not again. What did you do this time? Nothing. I mean, nothing wrong. It was really unfair. Just because I was going a tiny bit fast in the high street. Oh well, you'll just have to take it again. Third time lucky. Three point twenty. Hello. Sit down. I'm the secretary, and you are Daniel. And your surname is Gatti. G A W T I. Are you from Italy?、Uh, no,、uh, my grandparents were Italian, but I'm Argentinian. Ah.、Oh. Uh, but people always think I must be Italian because of my name. Oh, sorry. And what course were you thinking of doing? I'd like to do the advanced course. Um, I did an upper intermediate course in、uh, Buenos Aires last year, so I think I'll be able to do an advanced course here. Well, you'll have to do a level test first. You might find the advanced course a bit difficult. Is this your first time in Britain? Yes, but I've been to the USA last year. I went to the USA last year.、Uh, you mean? Oh. You see, maybe you're not quite ready for the advanced after all. Now, the level test takes one hour, and we'd like you. To...